Result. It's a tribute to all the ones who ran before me. No one's been true, so y'all can understand his glory. It's a tribute to all the ones who ran before me. No one's been true, so y'all can understand his glory. It's a tribute to all the ones who ran before me. No one's been true, so y'all can understand his glory. It's a tribute to all the ones who ran before me. No one's been true, so y'all can understand his glory. Hey, what up, fam? Welcome to Unsolicited, Episode 5B. I am your host, The Evangelical Norm. So apparently you can't do a video, reaction video, of a Taylor Swift song and include her video uh, because uh, they file those copyright claims against you and block your video on YouTube. So we are doing this again. Uh, I've disputed the, the claim claiming fair use I'm doing a commentary on the video so it should fall under fair use I don't know if it's going to go through or not and be unblocked at some point in time if it is you can go check it out uh, here on YouTube you can listen to the audio portion of it on Google Play or uh, iTunes or Spotify the, the audio portion just doesn't have the same impact if, as you're listening to it because you're not seeing the video so what I did is I grabbed a couple of screenshots and I want to talk about just a couple of specific things uh, about the video uh, and get that out there because I think they're important I think it's an important thing to talk about and I think there are people who will watch it on this venue that will not uh, go see it on or go listen to the audio version of it so all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Yes, we are reviewing a Taylor Swift song. I know it's not hip-hop, and it's definitely not Christian hip-hop. But with it being all over social media yesterday and so on, I really I felt a need to talk about it a little bit. And so since we are doing a music review uh, of her video, I will just say that the beat was kind of catchy. It had me tapping my foot and, you know, so on. It was a, a pretty good. But the the lyrics, the, the words are, uh, could be written by your average 12-year-old, I think. Um, one of the things I think about, Taylor Swift came up so young. Uh, and I don't know that she ever really grew up. I, I, I don't know. It just seems like, and, and, and I don't, li and... In fairness, I don't listen to a whole lot of Taylor Swift, so I can't say yes or no that what her what the majority of her discography and her music catalog holds. But this, it really did. It sounded like a junior high school uh, song. That was my opinion of it. Lyrically, the beat again, the the melody, the 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 tune was good. It was catchy and. There, there are a couple places in there where it was, eh, okay, as far as the song goes, but it just really was, it, it felt uh, junior high to me. So there's that. Uh, she has come under a whole lot of uh, fire from different places. One, she's been accused of pandering to uh, the LGBT base, fan base, just trying to make money off of them, which is possible. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure she's got a manager that's like, here, do this uh, and yeah, you know, and make some money off of these people. You're not exploiting this portion of your fan base accurately. So there's that. That's the that's a big thing that's been going on that I've heard. And then of course this morning I've I found out that she they people are accusing her of ripping off Beyonce's party music video, which I've never seen, uh, never heard the song, but. I don't know. I saw some screenshots here and there. I don't know if I would necessarily call it a ripoff or anything like that, but there are some similarities between the two. Uh, but what obviously what is happening is she is attempting to write the LGBT anthem for 2019, 2020, 
and I don't think she did a very good job of it. Uh, the beginning of the song is, of course, about her own haters, and then she spends the rest of the song uh, criticizing people who protest pride, things like that, and just endearing herself to her LGBT, uh, specifically drag queens, apparently, because that's what the majority of the people in the video were, RuPaul and a bunch of drag queens, and then apparently I've never seen Queer Eye for the Straight, straight Guy, but... The whole uh, cast of that, Ellen, a lot of stereotypes that are just bad throughout this entire video. Um, there was one section where, as they've gone through and they're showing a bunch of cakes, and my assumption is maybe this was not the intention, but and maybe my assumption is just because Jack Phillips from Masterpiece Cake Shop in Lakewood, Colorado, is back in the news recently. And so he's been sued again. So I'm assuming that with the, the whole theme of LGBT and so on, all this, this stuff with the cakes had to do with that, with him and Sweet Cakes by Melissa, who uh, apparently had a victory in, in some sense. I don't know if they're going to get some money back that they, they had to pay out, but there was some kind of victory that was kicked back down to the lower courts in, in Oregon, to the appeal courts from the appellate court in Oregon from the Supreme Court. But I didn't read all the story, but apparently a victory for Sweet Cakes by Melissa. Um, there is a video of of the lady. I don't, I don't know what her... I don't think her first name is actually Melissa, but there's a, a video out from her talking about that. You can go find. But, so again, Jack Phillips, Masterpiece Cake Shop, or, yeah, Masterpiece Cake Shop, has been sued for the third time. And this is, it's mind-boggling to me that uh, that it, with all the cake makers, all the bakeries that exist in, in Colorado, he managed to get targeted three times. This is an agenda thing. This is a not a tolerant act on the part of the LGBTQ community. This is a, an attack, uh, an attempt to ruin a man's livelihood, in fact. Uh, they're specifically targeting Jack Phillips, and I think it, it's horrifying. It's horrible. It's cruel. It's mean. Pick a word, and it's it, that's what it is. It's just, it's not tolerant. It's absolutely intolerant. If this is the message of this community of tolerance and, and acceptance or whatever, they should leave him alone. They should go, okay, he doesn't want to participate in what we're doing here. Let's go find someone else. But no, they're not, because that's not what they're about. It's not about tolerance. It's not about acceptance. It's about bake the cake, bigot, and you will be made to care. And that, that's bottom line. That's what it is. It is complete and total overthrowing of a Christian worldview and uh, putting a stop to it. So... That's what that's all about. And then the other thing I really that uh, kind of came across, and again, just bad uh, stereotypes, was this is how our, our Christian community is uh, portrayed in her video. And so, again, if this were just a uh, stab at or a poke at the Westboro Baptist cult, probably wouldn't bother me so much. But... These signs do not hold the appearance of Westboro. These look more to me like the babies are murdered here signs. And so to me, this is a, a jab at a more orthodox group of Christian evangelists. People like Apologia Church, people like Living Waters, um, people like End Abortion Now who are out there not only who are not like the Westboro Baptist cult who are out just to bring condemnation, but people who are truly out there trying to bring the gospel to people and call people to repentance and see people saved. That is our, our point. There's a couple of things in the song where she talks about uh, shouting at the people you hate. We don't do any of this out of hate. Taylor, you've got to know that. I thought you grew up Christian. I thought you came up, you were a Christian at one point or something, and maybe I was wrong, but there's no hate involved in any of what we do. If we truly hated the LGBT community with the 
beliefs that we have, which is that anybody who is engaged in sinful activity is destined for hell. They are on the wide path that leads to destruction. If we hated them, we would leave them alone and let them go. But because we love and care for this community and we understand the word of God to say that these people in the in the situation and the circumstance that they're in are destined are are bound for hell we want to call them away from that and present to them a gospel of forgiveness a gospel of repentance that says you can be saved you can come out of this you can come and and Jesus will forgive you of your sins that's why we do it. It's truly because we love these people, not because we hate them. If we hated them, we'd just leave them alone. Leave them to their own devices and let them go and, and do their thing and live and die and be judged by God and cast into the lake of fire. But we don't hate them. We love them and we want to see them saved. And so that's why we do what we do. That's why we go out to pride events and proclaim the gospel and call people to repentance. I don't go out with an, an intent of, and you know, some of the signs that they showed, there was one that said, uh, get a brain morons or morans, because obviously Christians are, are uneducated, redneck yokels who, who can't, can't spell right and, uh, and ain't got no teeth. This, this guy over here ain't missing no more teeth than than he's got and this is the portrayal of uh, of us christians uh as just uh backwoodsy inbred yokels with with bad hygiene and uh and apparently a lack of a washing machine again if this is a song all about tolerance why are you stereotyping and jabbing at christians just you know, we're always told, well, don't, you know, don't talk about what you just are, what you're against. All you guys are just about hate and what you don't like. No, we are for people being saved and for the gospel of Christ. We are. And so, again, I, I completely lost my train of thought. But here again, we've got this these jabs at uh, an intolerant portrayal of who Christians are in a video and a song that's supposed to be all about tolerance it's a it's a failure to uh to communicate your message you you've become exactly what you are accusing others of doing you are you know in your midst of of judge not lest you be judged you are judging and so understanding that that verse does not mean don't judge it means judge rightly i can come at that and and say I have judged rightly. I know what the word of God says. I've repented of my sin, dealt with my own sin, and now I am trying to help my neighbor get the speck out of their eye. And that's why I do what I do. And so all of this is obviously an, a misunderstanding, a uh, misleading of what the, the Christian goal and is in Christian evangelism to any of these things, whether it be abortion mills or um, pride events or just out on the street for a regular farmer's market is where I know people do a whole lot more of their uh, their evangelism than at a pride event or something like that. So that is our goal. And then, of course, the, the very last picture, and I didn't, I didn't pull it up and put it in the video, but the last screenshot is her saying, go sign my petition for the Equality Act. It seemed like this whole thing was a big uh, commercial for the Equality Act, and, uh, which could, as it's worded and if it's passed, could mean the end of free speech for Christians who go and and share the gospel at events like this it could shut us down we've already seen in the last couple of weeks two christian pastors one in in canada and one in the states being arrested for sharing the gospel for standing out in a public square and proclaiming the truth of the gospel of christ and they've are they're already being arrested so we're seeing this stuff happen and it's uh it it's coming it's coming down. And so, Taylor, you know, the song was, was just a failed attempt at pandering to a base. And what you did is you ended up uh, 
condemning a whole nother portion of the population uh, by your song. And so where you think you may have endeared yourself to one group, you've completely ostracized another. And so, and again, in your world, tolerance cannot be a two-way street. It's only a one-way street. You, either we tolerate them or we are um, not tolerated. And, uh, and I, I don't want to use the word persecuted because that's not necessarily what it is, but ridiculed and ostracized. So there you have it. There's my reaction, my opinion on... Uh, Taylor Swift's You Need to Calm Down. I need to calm down. I need to go uh, pick up my daughter from school. So that's what I need to do. So thanks, guys, for listening. I hope this was helpful. I uh, really do. Uh, hopefully my um, dispute on the, the copyright claim is work comes through and you'll be able to go back and see Unsolicited Episode 5A soon right here on YouTube. So thanks again for watching. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification button if you like what you see, and uh, you can get all the content that comes out from the evangelical norm throughout our different podcasts that we have. So uh, again, one more time, thank you for watching. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words, they're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.